great quote about you when I was researching. It's uh, uh, Eskimo's Joe's career is like watching the geeky guy next door growing up into a Calvin Klein model. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a, that's beautiful. That's a very, <laughs> do, you, do you feel like that? Because the evolution yeah. has just been incredible. I don't, I don't feel like we've ever been a very hip band or anything like that. Yeah. Other side. Yeah. Thanks, bro. Still there. Rocking. Turn left wherever you can. Okay. And I don't know where you are now. Um, um, I'm, I'm we're lost, asleep. but uh, at least we're being filmed. <laughs> Actually, no, 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 just follow this all the way. This, yeah, this is, just follow this all the way along. This is where we want to go. We don't want to go down to George Street. Um, I thought we were on George Street for some stupid reason. See, I don't know where we're going. Um, this, will, this will basically take us all the way through to the Opera House, this road here. The thing is, is like, generally rock and roll isn't meant to happen at this time of day. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have nighttime rituals, which, you know, are good. But, uh, but yeah, daytime rituals usually involve... This is the graveyard shift. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Good afternoon, hi. We're with the um, band playing up at Max the Session. Opera House in Max Sessions. Yes. Yeah, our registration should be on the security list. Uh, what, uh, <laughs> just to uh, add two more. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Ooh. After you, Stu. Hello. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneak out the back way. Yeah. Hello. So where does the drive come from? Because you guys are really driven, which a lot of people might know, but I, I think you are. Is it a family thing? Uh, I think we have a really good, um, like, kind of communication between the three of us, and and we get really excited when we get in the studio, and we and I, I don't know, I guess like ever since day one, all of us have had that kind of ambition to actually do really well at music, and it's not like you know, bar the consequence. It's more about the idea of sitting down, doing well, and writing really good songs together. Like yeah. for us, it's completely a song-based and album-based thing. You know, it's but not... you want it, don't you? Yeah. Oh, we want it. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can taste it. Yeah. When we originally started the band, it was it wasn't an ambitious thing to you know conquer the world. It was just a couple of idiots playing guitars that we didn't even own. You know, <laughs> and then I guess slowly but surely, you know, record deals arrived, and then all of a sudden we were in the middle of it, and we sort of thought, oh, we could actually do this for a living. <laughs> I was just backstage, and I was thinking, what do I love about Eskimo Joe? You know, and sure they make great music, yeah, sure they do electric shows, but what I love most about Eskimo Joe is that they want it. You know, they want to take over the world with their music, and they want to—they're just like pigs in the trough. They want to get in and take it all. And that's what rock stars should do, you know? Because if they do it, then we've got something to aspire to. So I want to welcome on stage the five little piggies you call Eskimo Joe. This is funny, I walked up to the opera house and I was like, it's a huge building and then it's actually quite small inside. It's like a, it's like the opposite version of a TARDIS or something. Let's do it.
Welcome to our Mac sessions. I hope you guys enjoy yourself. Um, we're going to play a bunch of songs from our new album, Black Fingernails, Red Wine, and a couple of songs from A Song as a City and maybe one song from Girl. So um, here's a song called All of the New. Please enjoy. Thank you very much. Tell me about Sarah, what's it about? Um, well, a friend of mine uh, was, <laughs> was hassling me out and saying, write a song about me. Her name is Sarah. Mm. Um, and I was like, OK, but you might not like what it says. And, mm. and what happened is she ended up having to go in for a operation because she had a, like a really um, something going wrong with her body. And so that's why the kind of chorus started off with emergency, I think I'm falling apart. Mm. But then I kind of started getting into this really kind of narky kind of comment on her and all her friends. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, it's a very raw tale of, of a day in the life of Sarah. Basically. Sounds cathartic. Yeah, I guess so. For her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I catharted for her, basically. Yeah.
I love it when the Opera House rocks. Beautiful. Well done, boys. Um, we're going to ask some questions now. Do we have a Belinda here? Once and for all, we would all like to know, what is the story behind the name of the band? Well, um, I guess when we first started, uh, it was just Joel and Stu and myself in a jam room mucking around. And, uh, and we were kind of we were looking for a band name. And a friend of mine had a T-shirt called Eskimo Joe's, uh, which is a diner in Stillwater, or Stillwater Oklahoma. And, um, and we found out that uh, Eskimo Joe was like a, a comic book character from the early 20s in the States. And, and at the time we thought, yep, that's a cool kind of poppy name. Now if you think about it, it is absolutely a ridiculous name. <laughs> <laughs> but we always tell ourselves that the Beatles is a really silly name as well, but people kind of got over that. So, and yeah. Smashing Pumpkins is pretty kick-ass, yeah, really. It's terrible. <laughs> well done. <laughs> OK, um, Lisa? Hi, guys. How would you best describe the group dynamic of Eskimo Joe? Like, what roles have you guys adopted? Well, I guess um, when it came to making our first record, Girl, that, that became really defined. We actually sat down around, I think it was in Cav's kitchen, around a table and decided what, what each person's strengths and weaknesses were. And we decided we'd play up to each other's strengths and weaknesses. And uh, I guess um, when it comes to the... the uh, initiation of the songs, Cav comes up with the lyrics and some chords, a chorus and a verse kind of thing. And then he kind of brings it to me and we take the song to the next level as far as the arrangements and the middle eight and all that sort of goes. And then Stu comes in a bit later next and sort of does the uh, some string arrangements and, and guitar lines and that sort of stuff. So that's sort of how we, we've worked it out. And we we uh, worked that formula. It seems to be going all right, but I think... Uh, with the it's next record, we're going to have to like maybe throw a spanner in the works and, and change it up a bit. Do it all blindfolded and move. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay, Kathy. Hi, guys. Hello, um, Kathy. Like many Stru uh, Australian bands, you've been touring a lot lately. Uh, what kind of mischiefs have you been getting yourselves into? This is a good one for you, Stewie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, okay. Um, it's a good one for chit chat. <laughs> <laughs> Like the, 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 the question should be, what's Chit Chat been up to with us that's mischievous? Um, we actually went out one night with, uh, with Chit Chat and um, we were drinking at the hotel bar we were staying at and um, woke up in the morning and found out there was a lot more drinks than we thought there was on the bill and um, realised that what we thought was Chit Chat's signature was actually not his signature. No. So we've been holding a grudge against you all these, all these years, Chit Chat. That's true. You get your own back this afternoon, I'm sure. <laughs> but to answer that particular question, generally what happens on the road stays on the road. So oh. you'll have to wait until we're 60 years old and poor and, and I release the uh, hidden Eskimo Joe biography. Unless, <laughs> unless you want to join us on the road. God, you're a flirt, aren't you? <laughs> OK, Emily? Is there a difference between the, your best songs and the songs that become your hits? Uh, yeah, I think that uh, the songs that end up on the radio, it's not like we kind of write them to be singles or anything like that, but they just end up being a really good kind of um, 
I guess, invitation into the rest of the record. Like, sometimes with other, other songs, which end up being more our favourite songs on the record, it's kind of like the amount of energy you put into it is what you get back out of it. But the singles, um, the songs that become the singles tend to just kind of grab you straight away and just go, check this out. And um, they're a lot more immediate, whereas um, the other songs, like I said, which probably end up becoming more of our favourite songs or mm. uh, the ones we're most fond of are the ones that are... That, yeah, that you kind of, um, you listen to it and it reveals a little bit about itself and then you go back and you go, hmm, and you listen to it again and it reveals a bit more and the more you listen, the more it kind of opens up. Myrna? How would you describe the evolution from Sweater to Sarah? Most unnatural. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> Bloody good answer. It's cute. Um, I can't really top that. Um, we always used to say that sweater was like a tattoo that we got when we were young that just will not wash off. Um, so I don't know, I don't think we're going to tattoo Sarah on ourselves. But With um, each record and, and EP that we've done, we've tried to change it up every time. Mainly at, this, at the beginning to keep ourselves interested and luckily it's kept uh, you know, people who are in, into the band interested as well. And um, I, I guess we'll always like, continue to do that. I guess originally we were just writing songs in two minutes just to have fun and um, that seemed to work for a while but then we realised that you know Blink 182's got to split up sometime so <laughs> we can't keep being 12 year old immature boys for the rest of our lives so <laughs> well not not in the we public are. eye anyway <laughs> so we had to yeah make music that we would want to listen to for our whole lives okay Madeline now I've got to come clean about this Madeline's my niece and she's my sister's flown her down from Brisbane today for two reasons. Yes. One, it's her birthday, and the other is her favourite band is Eskimo Joe. Happy birthday. I hope this is a good birthday present. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just wondering if you've gotten to a point where you're just like, wow, we've done it. Uh, you'd think so. <laughs> but you get to, like, because in Australia what's happening for us at the moment is amazing, and I feel like... You know, I feel like we put a lot of hard work to get to this point and, uh, and you know, we really appreciate the people who um, were fans and, like, we work really hard at trying to keep them as our fans as well. But um, I guess in it, we've only really... We've got made it to this place in Australia, you know, and, like, on Monday morning we go away to New York and do some more record company dating overseas and, and hopefully that gives us a chance to release a record overseas and, and I don't know, start, start from scratch. Each of the time, basically... To use a really stupid metaphor, every time you get to the top of one mountain, you just see all these other mountains that are much bigger. Mm. Cool. <laughs> I won't have to buy a present now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Carly. Um, I was just wondering, have you ever felt pressured to change your image or has it sort of like all been on your own terms? It's been a fairly organic thing. I think um, the image, the actual image of the band has largely been dictated by the music, I guess. Um, yeah, in, in the first instances, we were, you know... <laughs> Some of the costumes we used to wear on stage. Oh, oh the old days. <laughs> um, yeah, um, like I said, the music was just jokery, so we used to dress up in really bad wigs and jumpers and just be general fools on stage. And then, um, you know, as the albums have progressed, we've, um, yeah, we just changed with the music, I guess. It's never like a stylist coming in and going, you have to wear this, you have to wear that, which, um, which is good. <laughs> Tell me about Liar. Such a beautiful song. We always have a jam room. Like we we um, we have a big thing, and especially in Fremantle with the community, it's like we have we have a music room, which a lot of our, our friends' bands and everyone everyone works out of the same space a lot of the time. But this was a 
a moment in time when we didn't have a jam room and I think these guys had gone down the road to kick the footy or whatever and I kind of sat in my room which is where we were demoing and um, started coming up with that tune and I'd, I was in I was in the midst of my first proper real love I guess is, is what you could say and when you go into real love you experience all of the the crazy um, intense emotions that come with that and it was an explanation of yeah what was going on at that point in time I guess. Thank you kindly. Thank you. 
some shit up, what do you say?
Thank you very much. So how did Michael and Paul fit in? They're rubbish. They're rubbish? <laughs> um, <laughs> These are the, the other two guys who play with you when you're yeah, on yeah. tour. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, like, with people They're like, not rubbish. They're yeah. not rubbish. <laughs> with, no. with people That's like... There's, there's, our quote, there's our headline. I mean, <laughs> they're, 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 both, they're both amazing musicians. And, I mean, with, with people like Paul, like, he has a really, really hard job, you know, because mm. um, he's got a... Um, he's got to play like a mother bitch, you know, mm. and he does. He's an amazing yeah. drummer. And he also, like, we have kind of, because we're like a pop band, we have, like, we have, like, string sections and, and all of this stuff kind of playing along with us while we play. So he's got to play yeah. to, like, click tracks and yeah. stuff like that. So his world is more... He's in the hears. engine room shoveling coal. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, do you, do you pick on him or do you all gang up on cab? How does it work here? Oh, it's no. gang up on me, I think. Yeah. No one really picks on anyone in this band. We just yeah, sort right. of... <laughs> we just... <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for clapping. Thank you for singing along. Thank you for smiling. And thank you for being fans of our band. We very much appreciate it. But how do you stay together? Because that's, I think, the hardest thing with any band. The songs are great to write, the gigs are great to do, but how do you stay together? Because it's it's hard. largely down to communication, really. Just if you we have a call meetings all the time. Yeah, if you yeah. have a bloody meeting again. If you have a grievance, you air it straight away. Otherwise, it just festers. Yeah. And um, you just ask people if they're happy, and, and sort of, you know, you have to change scenarios if they're not happy. That sort of thing. It's it's all about communication, really. Okay. You have to m remain forever vigilant. It's also we've come this far, and we've we've only really had success in in this country. Yeah. And like to get overseas and and have a record release or whatever would be amazing. And, that's the sort of big goal at the moment. So, so it's bonding you. Yeah. Really, you hate each other, but the, the, the <laughs> yeah, success the in America cash. would keep I, you I hear these stories about like other bands who like you know they hate the lead singer or they hate yeah. this person, and I just go, what a horrible situation yeah. to be in. You know, like oh, yeah. what happens if you like win an aria or something yeah. and you have to go up and do the speech and then like this has been awesome. Mm. Thank you. You know, like they it, like it'd be really hard to believe it. And then when they go into like do a record or whatever, like what yeah. the hell do they do, talk about? What, oh, no. How do they sit down and actually write music and love it? You know, it's like. Yeah. Maybe some bands survive on that tension, but we certainly don't. We kind of we survive on.
on ease and love. kindness. Yeah, love. <laughs> Thank you.